Despite having 5,500 hours in Team Fortress 2, I will be the first to admit that I don't know everything. I often see people assume that veterans have infinite wisdom and experience and have learned how to use every possible item to their maximum potential, but oftentimes I find the opposite to be true. Experienced players form routines, practicing the same few classes or weapons constantly since that's what's keeping them invested in the game. And I'm not really an exception to that. Even though I play a lot of classes equally, I fall back on stock demo, soda popper, scout, and degreaser pyro nearly constantly. But ever since I started making YouTube videos, I've been more or less forced to expand my horizons and learn a vast majority of weapons for background footage. And while I definitively don't like how some of the weapons play, there have been others that I've changed my opinion on entirely. For whatever reason, some weapons get completely overlooked, a bad first impression, or stigmatized to the point of turning me off from ever using them, and the longer I play the game, the more set in stone these opinions become. But in my quest to try out every weapon, there have been some that have broken the mold and have really shined after being given a second chance. So I want to talk about the weapons weapons that I was wrong about, or more specifically, why I didn't like them before and what got me to eventually change my mind. Note that this is 100% my own personal experience. I'm not claiming anything about these weapons other than why I personally started to find them fun. So while some of the information and takes may be obvious to people who are already fans of the weapons, I'm effectively discovering it for the first time after about 5,000 hours. So anyway, let's go through each weapon that I've eventually turned my mind around on. Probably the biggest 180 I've ever had with the weapon was with the Force of Nature. About six months ago, I made a video talking about about the weapons that I can't stand using, and the Force of Nature was at the very beginning of that list. The issues I had with it then were that number one, the airborne knockback can very easily screw you over, and number two, the knockback on opponents is inconsistent at best and detrimental to you at worst. Few things are more infuriating than letting an enemy live on single digit health because you blasted them outside of your proper follow up range. But after recording background footage for that video, I got the urge to play with the Force of Nature more, and throughout the time I was able to play with it, I really learned how to adjust my playstyle to fit the Force of Nature's strength. Instead of mashing spacebar for defensive movement like I tend to do with other weapons, I have to play more aggressively and run directly at the person I want to shoot. And, although it forces me to be aware of nearby terrain, knocking someone back into a wall has many more benefits than I initially assumed. You can seriously ruin someone's day by gluing them to a nearby surface, I was honestly impressed by how effective that ended up being. Or, if you've encountered someone like an overhealed heavy that has too much health to take down in one burst, you can send him to Africa with a meat shot and force him out of an otherwise good position. I also quite like how well this thing deals with close range clashes like Pyro and Demo Knight. If you can hit consistent meat shots, they can't really do anything to touch you. It's amazing. But by far my favorite part about this weapon is the fan jump. By aiming diagonally down and firing right after jumping, the vertical distance you get is ridiculously good. Like, better than perfectly spaced atomizer or winger jumps good. It does take a bit of practice, but once you've gotten the hang of doing it quickly, you have incredible built-in mobility that doesn't even require you to switch to another weapon. So even though you have more positional requirements when using the Force of Nature, the knockback itself gives you the tools to reposition both your yourself and your enemies, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Given the choice, I think I'd still rather play with a soda popper based on how I enjoy playing Scout, but I will be the first to admit that I was seriously wrong about the Force of Nature, and over the past few months it has become one of my favorite Scout primaries. The Airstrike was by and large a weapon I just kind of forgot about, really. If I wanted a launcher with blast jump resistance, I'd use the Liberty Launcher. If I wanted something that could deal heavy ambush damage, I always found Stock or the Direct Hit to do the job perfectly fine. And it's not like I'd never try it out, either. Sometimes I'd throw it in a loadout just to see how things go, but usually what would happen is that I get frustrated that the rockets deal pitiful damage and promptly switch to something else. But it wasn't until embarrassingly recently that I remembered one of the most obvious yet still underrated synergies in the entire game, the airstrike and the base jumper. I'm not breaking any new ground by explaining why these work together well. The airstrike gets bonuses while you're rocket jumping, and the base jumper lets you fall slower, thus greatly extending the time you can stay in the air. But for whatever reason, I very rarely see this combo used in actual games. I feel like most people who want to try the airstrike assume that pairing it with the base jumper is somehow cheating, because the real way to use the airstrike is with the gunboats like a man. And because of that, they pass up on a legitimately fun combo of weapons. While the base jumper can be a crutch, mainly with stuff like the market gardener, there is undeniable utility in slow falling with the airstrike. For instance, hovering above a door frame and ambushing people as they come through really isn't possible with something like the gunboats, and have done well is incredibly effective. Could you dive bomb and kill a medic without the assistance of the parachute? I mean, yeah, probably. But what you can't do is float in the air for long enough to carpet bomb an entire group of enemies, which is insanely effective if you know where to place your rockets. As long as you can do short rocket hops on command, the terrain is not as much of an impedance as I thought it would be, which alleviates one of my biggest potential issues with the weapon. One of the bigger challenges on note is learning to track with rockets instead of flick, since the faster firing speed makes this more of a beam than a source of burst damage. But once you learn how to correctly aim, this thing has one of the highest potential damage out of all of the rocket launchers, which is incredible for a weapon of its caliber. Like I mentioned, I've not quite gotten the hang of 
performing perfect dive bombs with it yet, but I do see the potential it offers. And the fact that there's still more tech I've yet to learn is super cool since it encourages me to keep practicing and getting better with the weapon. Regardless of my current skill though, the airstrike is most definitely a weapon that I've turned around on, and combined with the even more underrated base jumper has become one of my favorite playstyles for the class as of now. Demo Man has two weapons that I've been enjoying recently, both of which fill in the same niche but for different slots. The Lock and Load and Quickie Bomb Launcher are weapons that I've overlooked since Gun Metal, but after I started messing around with them a few months ago just to see what a longer range Demo Man playstyle would look like, I've been in love. Now before I go too much further, I will give the fair warning that no, these weapons are not strictly as good as their stock counterparts, but range is something that is heavily underlooked in this game, and having two weapons that extend it can be amazing. So first of all, the Lock and Load. The reason that I never used this one is simply because I thought it sucked. One fewer bomb and no rollers made this nearly unusable with my preferred playstyle for Demo Man, and I've always viewed the faster projectile speed as nothing but a crutch. And while my opinion of this thing still isn't exactly glowing, I definitely have come to appreciate all that a faster projectile speed entails. You can get some wild cross-map grenade snipes with this thing, and combined with the extra building damage, it makes dealing with defenses at longer ranges very effective. And while this is also partly due to the grenades not tumbling, the faster projectiles feel really good to use, even if you can technically hit most of the same shots with the Iron Bomber or stock. So while the upsides aren't incredible in their own right, they do create a very satisfying weapon, which many people, including myself, would say it makes it worth using. The Quickie Bomb Launcher, on the other hand, is a legitimately good weapon. I honestly couldn't tell you why I never used the Quickie Bomb Launcher much. I think I just remembered how bad it was when it first released and never bothered to try it even through the buffs. But upon giving this thing another shot, I realized that I'd actually been missing quite a bit. The biggest thing I learned is that the way you have to use this is a bit counterintuitive. I find that the Quickie Bomb works better as a primary weapon, since you're almost guaranteed to be at a long range advantage when you enter into a fight, but the fact that you can choose when the bombs detonate means that you have a lot of control over who you're actually hitting. For instance, unlike with grenades, pockets can't block shots for their medic with this thing. On top of that, the damage is surprisingly good, even if I do think it could be slightly better at long range. Most classes will die in two to three fully charged stickies at mid range, which you can very easily land considering how fast they charge and travel. And while you do lose out on a lot of spam capability of stock, that doesn't mean that spamming isn't viable. Even though you have half the clip size and a slight damage penalty, it's usually still enough to kill most classes in a pinch. But the best part about the Quickie Bomb by far are the critical hits. Random crits, crits Krieg charge, Halloween pumpkins, doesn't matter. Get crits on this sucker and you become an orbital strike cannon, deleting people you deem unworthy of living at nearly any range you want. Some of my favorite moments with the Quickie Bomb launcher are watching a fully charged crit sticky disappear behind the horizon and then seeing three kills instantly appear in my kill feed. It doesn't happen often, but whenever it does, it is super satisfying. Overall though, I think the lock and load is better than people think, and the Quickie Bomb launcher is legitimately slept on. I don't know if I would recommend using both of them at the same time, since having one long range weapon and one spam weapon does make you more well rounded than being a complete sniper, but I do know of the combo where you can land both a lock and load pipe and a Quickie Bomb sticky back to back for an extremely quick kill, so I guess there is potential. So if you're looking for new weapons to try out, I would definitely encourage you to give these two a go. The Huntsman is another weapon that I put in my most hated weapons video, and not entirely for not. The biggest thing I disliked about the Huntsman and the reason that I originally put it in that list is the janky inconsistency it seems to have. The charge doesn't match the animation, the uncharged projectile has a weirdly flaccid trajectory, whether you land a headshot often seems up to luck, and the weapon doesn't automatically reload when inactive even though it feels like it should. There was a lot going against the Huntsman that really turned me off from using it, which is the main reason my opinion of this thing was less than positive for several years. But a combination of factors forcing me to use it for a while, mainly class wars, actually gave me some positive experiences with the weapon. So I will at least admit that after trying it out some more, the Huntsman is actually a lot of fun. One of my biggest gripes with this game is the apparent lack of mid-range classes. Some weapons like the short stop and the direct hit try to fill that niche, sure, but due to the nature of damage fall off, your mid-range DPS still ends up minimal. But that's where the Huntsman seems to come in, allowing Sniper to trade his scope and long-range damage for a more agile playstyle that specializes at mid-ranges. And short of something like TF2 Classic's Hunting Revolver, I've come to realize that the Huntsman handles this niche as best as a TF2 weapon realistically can. Give a mid-range weapon hit scan and you make it more versatile than otherwise intended. Make it a projectile though and you run into the issue of enemies being able to dodge. Having a very fast projectile that you have to somewhat commit to firing is honestly a good way to handle something like this, and that's what's ultimately convinced me to start playing around with the Huntsman more. Is it perfect? Well, no. I've not completely ignored the jank that comes with the weapon. More accurately, I've gotten begrudgingly used to it to the point of it not affecting my gameplay as much. But there does seem to be a method within the madness, and once you get the intuitive feel for the Huntsman, it really does start to feel better. And last but certainly not least, the Your Eternal Reward is a weapon that I cannot believe I didn't like using before. This thing is incredibly fun and has almost single-handedly renewed my interest in Spy as a class as of recent. If you asked me about it a year ago, I probably would have told you that
that it only existed as a mediocre gimmick. It saps away your cloak, screws you over if you stab a slower class, and forces you to hide for most of the game to wait for an opportunity to arise. But a few months ago, and I am not kidding when I say this, I had a dream where I was playing TF2 and tearing up a server with the Your Eternal Reward. When I woke up and played TF2 later that day, I tried it out just to see what would happen, and as fate would have it, I, I died horribly and barely got any kills, but I did have a surprising amount of fun with it, which encouraged me to try it out more. And I have to say that after figuring out its synergies, I realized it can be absolutely bonkers in casual. I get the feeling most people are listening to music or something when they play the game, because I seem to get away with some ridiculously obvious stuff with this knife. Sometimes I'll stab a medic's pocket right in front of him, and because he happened to be turned around and blaring Weezer through his headphones, he'll continue healing me without realizing anything's wrong. And if you get really good with positioning and or lucky, you can get entire team wipes, which is, as we say in the industry, pretty poggers. The only thing that you really have to learn is how to act like your disguise because your entire survival relies on people not bothering to spy check you. But if you remember not to look enemies in the eye and occasionally make your disguise switch to the appropriate weapons, you can get killstreaks out the ass with this thing. I will admit that in higher skill lobbies it does fall apart somewhat, since you're pretty much resigned to getting singular picks like you would with any other knife. And if the person in front of the dude you just stabbed is playing the game in complete silence like a coward, he'll probably hear the knife sound and know something's up. But if the circumstances circumstances are right and your brain is big, this is honestly probably one of my favorite weapons in the entire game to mess around with. I love the more cerebral strategies that games have to offer, and as far as TF2 goes, this is about the best you can get. Well, usually, sometimes enemies are just terminally stupid, but we take those too. But in even slightly favorable circumstances, the Your Turn of Award is a blast, and I highly encourage you to try it out if you're a fan of more strategic gameplay. So those are most of the weapons that I've had my opinion drastically shift on, but I do want to address a misconception that I've seen people spreading around in the comments on my most hated weapons video. I know I'll have some people say that my opinions in that video should be discounted because I clearly just needed to use the weapons I put on the list more, and that I only dislike certain items because I'm bad with them. So if you're one of the many that holds that opinion, I do want to note that there are weapons that I tried several more times and still have the same, if not a worse, opinion of. Giving a weapon a second chance does not necessarily mean that I'll come to like it. Everything I mentioned in this video or just the cases of that actually happening. The Beggar's Bazooka, for instance, still irks me to this day, and even though I've gotten slightly better with it, I've never had the urge to equip it outside of when I'm recording recording a video. And believe me, I have tried about every suggestion people on that video had to offer, but the random inaccuracy and janky feel of the weapon are just still too much for me. You are allowed to dislike a weapon that you're experienced with, that's just the nature of individual preference. And hopefully this video shows that the reverse is also true, where being bad with a weapon doesn't necessarily mean that I hate it. If I like how a weapon plays, I have absolutely no problem getting better with it, but it's not always going to be the case. Sometimes the way I like playing the game conflicts with the intent of an item, and that's fine. These videos are entirely just to look into my own opinions on a game that I enjoy. Take them as advice if you want, but don't take them as gospel. So anyway, hopefully I've opened your eyes to a weapon that you may have overlooked. Simultaneously, the most fun and infuriating part of my job is being forced to use weapons that I'm not very good with. A lot of times it makes me frustrated, but in the instances where a new weapon just clicks, it's frankly incredible. So go, give some of your disliked weapons another shot. Maybe you'll actually come to enjoy them. What I'm hoping you did enjoy was this video, in which case make sure to like, and most importantly, have a good one.